Hey guys. I finally achieved my goal of clearing legendary reliquary with a sequence that should be easy to follow. I also did this quest without any trust stones and units I think most people should have. Most of the gear I'm using should be accessible by farming or TMRs that come from units. I'm aware that I am using Black Rose Helena, but I feel like everyone should have her. But now, let's take a look at the first recommended unit Mediana. Using Shukuchi, Black Magic Arcana and Green Mage is recommended. Also, Saiga Gauntlet for a neat little trick I discovered. Make sure your faith value is maxed out for all your magic units. Prunus Lamina is a great weapon to have at plus 6 casting time reduction. You could also just use Trust Stones with reduced casting time. Smart Coats are just basic gear I use for everything, but feel free to use whatever you want. For the Esper, I'm using Siren for casting time reduction. Fleeting Blossom is a great VC for Acquire AP Up. It's highly recommended to have some sort of Acquire AP Up for this quest. Rockcliff Titan for HP Up. Now for Black Rose Helena, Arithmetician, which is Dark Mastery and Level to Level are recommended. Kaleida Moon for the TMR. Silver Rimmed Spectacles are perfect for magic units because of the spirit pen that it grants. I have a plus 6 but a plus 5 will also work. They should be easy to get because the quest can be farmed in the far plains. Next, the VC she has on is her own. Granting agility for her is helpful. For the sub VC, I have the Qatar VC for critical hit rate up and bestowed agility. Our next unit to take on those quests is Ildira, Spellblade, Black Magic Lore and Level to Level are recommended. Other calculator units should theoretically work in her place. Truso for Magic Attack Up. Beloved Sidekick for Agility and Defense. I have Platinum Mace plus 6 but a plus 5 will do. My next pick is Skahal. He's probably a unit not everyone might have ready, but I do recommend him or at least a long-range lighting magic unit. Prunus Lamina for casting time reduction. Also, lightning attack up. Golden Anklet for some extra speed. Plus 6 is not necessary. The TMR I have on him isn't important since I don't use it in this playthrough. Feel free to use whatever TMR if needed to adjust some stats. Roaring Thunder Clap to boost everyone's magic. Envious Magician to boost sub-magic slot and casting time reduction. Last but not least, our only MR on this formation, Silma. Kotadama, Red Mage Lore, and Magic Up are recommended. I'm using a Zero Soul of Thamasa for its magic base and TP. Since it's raid gear and harder to get I'm leaving it at zero. Plus 5 Spectacles for Spirit Pen. Curve VC for more lighting attack up. This will also benefit Skahal. Becoming stronger than anyone else for casting time reduction. I do have to put in a little side note here. If you are building her, make sure that her agility isn't too high. She will miss an opportunity in the quest to hit an enemy. Also, keep in mind that any equipment you use on Team 1, you cannot use that equipment on Team 2 and vice versa. Having anyone die mid-fight will make you lose overall turns, abilities used in any level are counted as used for the whole quest. Proper sequence is necessary, turn orders are also very important. This guide is to help people struggling with this content. The stronger your overall units are and with trust stones equipped, the easier this will be. 140 or even limited units make a difference. I tried my best to make this guide budget friendly. But now it's time to show team 2. This formation can be different things. Mono element slashing teams will have the most success in completing the last levels. 
Also, I can't stress enough about how important Jeweled Ring plus 6 is. This gear gives a P by landing critical hits. You can farm this equipment in the farplane. I'm using 3 rings in this formation along with 2 TMRs that give a P regeneration. Locke does not need one because his kit has an AP regeneration skill. If you are using trust stones, then I recommend the AP cost reduction skills to help out as well. Recommend you at least have one tank unit that can generate hate for this team. Engelbert is my tank. There is also a TMR that I recommend you equip them with. Sacred Step allows you to clear debuffs, the important one being to clear off Frostbite. It will come in handy when fighting one of the espers at the end. I really wanted to use Phoebe in this formation, but I found that she didn't contribute as well as I thought she would. She ended up wasting turns and not being able to do any kind of significant damage. I didn't want to use Elena, but she fit the spot all too well. Also, I transcendence her one time. Although transcendence isn't necessary but I didn't want to burden people by making it seem like they have to transcendence her. So Elena became my spot healer for the team. The TMR and Carbuncle VC are just enough healing sources to get by. Everyone else has some sort of way to get healing from one of their own skills. Locke has Drain Rush to help him get back some HP. Engelbert has Retribution Drain. Now for a quick overview of vision cards and gear. Remember that this second team can be a different element, just so long as you have a way to chain attacks. Metal Demon for slash attack up. Clairvoyant for AP and attack up. Bahamut for agility, magic and unit resistance. Solidus for slashing resistance and HP up. Flash of Insight for attack up. Supreme Onslaught for max damage limit up. There will be times this comes in handy to do extra damage during a chaining sequence. Oath of a New Dawn for more AP up. Igeon for more slash attack and bestowed slash attack resistance pen. Smite the dark for critical damage up. Carbuncle for the ruby regeneration. The early stages of this quest are fairly quick but do require specific placement. This guide took a lot of trial and error but I'm hoping it will do some good for the community. Enjoy the tactics. Are you prepared to Move Helena lives? up and cast level 3 dark. No mercy. Let's take them all Move down. Silma and cast crimson resistance. Time to get serious. I Move Skahal and cast alive. quicken on Mediana. Move Ildira forward to cast level 3 water. All according to calculation. Well, well. Move so Mediana forward and do nothing else. Let me help you. Not bad. Move her forward again and cast Blizzara Arcanist. Take that. Well, I suppose this was nothing to worry about. Move Skahal forward and do nothing. 
Are you prepared to lose your lives? Move Helena forward and cast Height Dark. Huh. Move it's Silma to this down. specific spot to cast Jamming Thrust. Off with you. This move Ildira to this spot and do nothing. Oh, well, Mediana can move so to the far left and cast fight. Blizzara Arcanist. Skahal will stay in place and cast Thundaga. Ildira will stay in place and cast Holy. All according to calculation. I shall end you. Helena will stay in place and cast level 3 Dark. Die! Silma will stay in place and cast Jamming Thrust. This is the neat trick I learned. Use fleet of foot to lower hate. This causes the dragon on the left to move closer to the other dragon. Take this. Otherwise, it will separate further and thus take more actions to clear the level. Pardon our intrusion. Move Skahal in front of the dragon to cast Thundaga Disposer. Give her. Move Ildira to this specific spot and cast Holy. Take this! Move Helena next to the dead dragon to cast Black Rose Hex. Jamming Thrust Shuzzled. Move Skahal down the alive. steps to cast Thundaga Disposer. This battle shall be ours. Move Ildira to this spot in the corner to cast Water 3. Take this. this is the Let's part that Silma can miss if her agility is too high. She needs to have her turn after the enemy moves. Then cast Jamming Are Thrust you? to cancel the enemy's action. Are you Move to Helena to this lives? specific spot on the steps to cast Level 3 Dark. Move Mediana to this specific spot and cast Ruin on the enemy at the top. I shall end you. Sometimes Ildira dies here. If so, try using HP Trust Stones or Slash Resistance Armor. Move Silma in between Skahal and Mediana and cast Cura. Cast Guard Haste on himself. Move Mediana next to Silma and cast Blizzara Arcanist or Bio depending on how many rats are left. Use Helena to kill off one of the enemies here and move next to the pillar. Prepare yourself. Here I go. Ildira should heal up here unless she is capable of killing the last enemy. My magical powers are rising. Here I go. Use Skahal to cast Guard Haste on Mediana. Jamming Thrust the last enemy. Off with you. There's no I'm way I can die. die. Let me help you. Not bad. Cast Flare on Nasha and don't move. Move Helena as far down as possible to cast level 3 Dark. No mercy. Move Ildira down to use Karaga on everyone. Hey, I'll have to Your fight help is appreciated. Thundaga Disposer on all three enemies. How do you like this? Give up. Jamming Thrust Nasha and don't move. In this next sequence, you see me take some time to make a decision. That's because in the next level, I need Mediana to have enough AP to cast Cosmo Plume, so ultimately, 
I decide to smack Nasha. You can move Skahal down here to cast a regular thunder. Try this. Prepare yourself. I decided not to attack here and just gain some AP with Helena. Ildira finished off Nasha with Holy. All according to calculation, enemies successfully suppressed. Now for the nail biter of the whole quest. So many things can go wrong here, but the ultimate goal here is to try to clear the level before Team 2 spawns in. If you can copy what I've done so far, then it should be possible. Are you prepared to lose your lives? I start by using Luna Verve and not moving. Sorry. Your help is appreciated. Let's Silma will use down. nimble movement on herself. I cannot let Skahal will cast alive. guard haste on Mediana and also not move. This battle shall be ours. Ildira will now heal everyone up and not move. Oh, we'll have to fight in earnest. Well, well. With Mediana, so I want more AP, so I used a spell on Carbuncle. It won't get rid of the reflect barrier, unfortunately. Steady now. Not bad. Time to get now it's time to attack, like move Mediana to this specific spot, and cast Cosmo Plume. Ultimate attacks cannot be reflected. Can you endure this? Now move Helena forward and use her ultimate on the damage enemies. Prepare yourself. With Silma, move her in front of Ildira and cast Fast Cast on Helen. Silma has an attack that can damage the enemies with Reflect. Skahal will now move forward and use his ultimate on the damaged enemies. There is a chance it will paralyze them. It doesn't matter if it does. Or doesn't. Ildira can hit now with her Taunting Blade. It should at least kill something. If the Carbuncles are low health, they will waste a turn removing the Reflect on themselves. Since they are paralyzed in this example, they will stay still with Reflect on. Now it's time to chip away at the Worm next to Mediana. It doesn't have Reflect, so fire away. I move her away to the Crystal in case something happens. I'll have to fight in earnest. With Helena, I used Height Dark on the worm. Prepare yourself. Can you endure this? With Silma, use Resistance Break. With Skahal cast Comet on the damaged worm. Ildira can cast Holy here to help kill off the worm. I know your angle. I'll then move her away to try to save her. Prepare yourself! Now it's time to finish off the last worm. With the remaining moves that I have left, I will first finish off the worm. If the carbuncles were not paralyzed I would have finished them off already. Can 
you endure this? Esper summons cannot be reflected. I take my time here making sure I don't accidentally hit the carbuncle with an AoE, and it backfires on my units. I would appreciate a comment down below letting me know if this guide was useful in some way. Honestly, this part of the quest always felt the hardest to achieve. Mostly because of the reflect barrier and the worms. The Esper effect I used helps light units, this will help team 2. If you are using a different element team for team 2, then I recommend you use an Esper effect that will help them. Height Dark was my best option here. Silma can damage Carbuncle here with Resistance Break. With Mediana, I finished this last round with a Blizzara. Take that. There's not much else I can do here, so I just waste my remaining moves. Not bad. I will crush I'll you kill all. them. Mercy. Strategy for this portion is to get a tank out in the middle of the map to minimize the damage to the DPS units. Take out the carbuncle first and allow the other enemies to line up for AoE attacks. Annihilate the enemy. Let's go. It's important not to waste all of your hate skills right away. Huh? Emberlight vitality and don't move. I must prevail. Revitalize and don't move. Focus. We won't forgive those who make others suffer. Evil doers beware Let's and go, don't partner. move. Let's go, partner. Be gone. Trivial. Trivial. Move Elena up an iridescent blade on Mariali. Move Lucio up and try slash Mariali to finish her off. Stay down. Elsarel is out of range, so have her gain some AP. Locke should be able to finish off Carbuncle. Engelbert will move up and use the Taunting Blade to keep hate on him. Come on now, fall! Move Elena up and use Crystal Shine Bright to get the enemy Not down to 1 watch. HP. Now use Lucio to move up and damage the other enemy. Elsarel can now use Maiming Slash to hit both enemies. It is futile. <sighs> Locke is out of range, so have him gain some AP. Engelbert will just do a basic attack here to end this level. Was that all? Then that was not truly our enemy. Now, it's time for the final area. Some things to keep in mind are frostbite and confusion debuffs can affect your units. First, keep everyone back except Engelbert. You will want to gain some AP before proceeding. <laughs> Recognize. All right. Let's see how much fun we, we won't can forget get those who make others suffer. Let's I decided to heal up here and give Engelbert some protection. Boon of the Phoenix on lock. I must prevail. Greater Domain of Light just for some good AP gains. Huh? Concentration that Vitality with Elsarel. Yeah. 
Have Engelbert move forward and use Saintly Wall. Leave the rest to me. Trivial, you groveling at my feet. Move lock forward and use a pea hunt on the two snakes. Move Lucio to a specific spot and use taunting blade on the two snakes. Stay down. I can take it. Move Elena behind Engelbert and use Prismatic Punishment on the two snakes. Got you. Elsarel can move forward, but she is out of range. Have her do nothing. You will want to keep her on this side of the map. Units that can inflict stun or poison are good to keep on this side to fight the next boss that spawns in. I can take it. Have Engelbert use the Taunting Blade here and don't move. See if you can stop this. Have Lucio damage the snake here and move up. I won't hold back. Locke needs HP so I used Drain Rush on the snake. Elena can damage Moraga and move to the other side of Engelbert. Elsarel can use Blade of Inertia on Moraga here and don't move. Have Engelbert use Retribution Drain here to get some HP back. Have Elena move again to start slash chaining the boss. Not on my watch. Move Elsarel to get in range and yeah. use Blade of Inertia. If the boss's HP is low enough, it's better just to do a basic attack and gain more AP. These next sets of bosses can all be stunned. It's not guaranteed, but there is a chance and it would greatly help. Drain Rush to gain some HP. Unfortunately, in this playthrough my Engelbert got paralyzed, so keeping hate on him didn't happen. Iridescent Blade on the damaged behemoth. Drain Rush again to gain HP and kill the behemoth. At this point, I didn't know whether to attack or use a defensive skill with Lucio. I risked it and attacked anyways. Elsarel has a stunning blade, in different runs, it did work often. In this run, it did not work at all. Bad RNG, I guess. Elena is low on AP and Lucio on HP. Ruby Rejuvenation will help them both. I'm Thank with you. I use Lucio to damage Fryzess because my Engelbert can't generate hate. Fryzess can inflict frostbite on everyone. I won't hold back. It took me some time to decide what to do here. I thought maybe I can stun Behemoth. I was also thinking that if Fryzess is going to launch a frostbite attack I don't want everyone to get caught in it. Huh. Elsarel tries for another stun blade. I moved Elena away to damage the behemoth. Got you. 
I consider my options here. Kill Behemoth or try for a stun attack on Fryzess. Since I can see Fryzess is next on turn order I decided to go for the stun. Right there. Finally Engelbert is free. I summoned Odin here to reach the behemoth. Also, the map effect gives critical hit rate up. I used Elsorel to get into range and finish off Fryzess. At the same time, I don't want her to get too far because the next boss will spawn in on that side of the room. Final boss here we go. Considering my options here, I give Elena AP and cost reduction here. By the Azure Crystal. I used Lucio's ultimate here right to lower light resistance. Engelbert still has immortal conviction to generate hate. Now it's time to start the chain train. Not on my watch. Stay down. It is futile. Done. With ten turns to spare considering that the last three levels could probably be optimized a little better. Also, Engelbert got stuck for three turns. Thanks for watching.